and now it's time to preview an upcoming game with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at another Kickstarter preview. This one is going to be of Chronosphere. Now, as you can see, Chronosphere is a small game, it's a card game, and in this game you're going to be using your historical knowledge and your bluffing ability in order to try and put events that happened in time order, either in AD or BC, and you're going to have a choice to place it in either of those two halves of the Chronosphere, aptly named, in order to try and put them in order. But at any time, one of your opponents could call a bluff on you or call your bluff. I should say, uh, and check your knowledge. And if you're wrong, you may have to draw some more cards. The point being to vacate yourself of having any cards in your play area. So real quick, why don't we take a look at what comes inside this little box. We'll see how the game plays and we'll come back here at the end and I'll sum it all up for you. So here we are and we're looking at the play area for Chronosphere. Now this play area is going to be a circle of time. And I'm delineating the two halves of the circle with a wooden stick. The game will not come with a wooden stick, but it's easier for me to illustrate that there are two sides by having the stick in play. One side of the play area will be the BC area, or the BC era of time. And the other side will be the AD era of time. And this makes a circle with the earliest BC event falling right here in slot one of the board, and the last AD or most recent event falling in slot 12 of the board right before the earliest event. Players will be trying to play their cards effectively and correctly, or bluffing, into either side of this board, either BC cards over here and AD cards over here. And you really don't want to place cards on the wrong side, and you also want to try to place them in order. On their turn, players will have three options. They'll either play a card from their tableau of cards, their hand of cards that they were dealt at the start of the game, or they will discard one card from their tableau and have to draw two new ones. Maybe they have a card they're really not sure about, and they'd rather have two new cards or they're going to be able to call a challenge on somebody else, or on one side of the sphere, I should say. When they're challenging a side of the sphere, they're saying that the events on that side of the sphere aren't in order, and they're going to basically be challenging the last player to play in that area to prove to them that they're in the right order by flipping them all over. And if they're not, there's going to be a penalty or a reward for that player. At the very start of the game, most of our players are going to be taking the option to play a card, as the goal is ultimately to get all of the cards out of your hand or out of your tableau of your area and hopefully have no cards left before anybody else is able to do the same. So on your turn you're likely going to play a card toward at the start of the game. And let's say that our player decides they want to play the Mona Lisa. They're relatively positive that the Mona Lisa was in the AD era and they're going to place it over here. The first card placed in either of our two sides, either BC or AD, must be placed in either the first slot, the earliest BC time, one if you're placing in BC, or in the last of the AD slots, in this case 12, if you're playing on the AD side. From this point on, until this area is cleared, no player may play past Mona Lisa, meaning no events that are more recent are going to be able to be played right now until the Mona Lisa is gone. Unless, of course, you bluff and you place it before the Mona Lisa in time, and uh, nobody catches you. The same is true for the, AD, uh, for the BC. If I were to play a BC event, for example, let's say I decided to play the Corset instead, it would have to go in the earliest time slot and no one could play before that, so all events that happened before the Corset would either have to be bluffed and placed in the wrong spot, or be exchanged and used uh, to get more cards in order to place them in a different way. So we'll say that this player plays the Mona Lisa in the last slot of the AD period because that's where they have to play their first AD card. Our next player looks at their events and they see the first thing they come across is robots. Well, robots pretty clearly came after the Mona Lisa, so they decide they can't place that right now. Then they take a look and they see they have photographs. Well, photographs also came after the Mona Lisa, so that's not really a good option either. But their third card that they see is spears. And they know that spears came in BC, so they decide to place it in BC, putting it in slot one because it's the first card there and that's where it has to go. Our next player then looks at their cards because they still don't want to challenge anybody and they don't want to trade in this early. And they see the first one they look at is beads. And they're pretty confident that beads came after spears, but were also BC. So they're gonna place them next to that in the turn of order of time. So spears first, then beads, and then eventually an AD, Mona Lisa. So now since we're in a three player game, we're back to the first player. And the first player still thinks that everything on this board is pretty much in the right order. And they take a look at ice cream and they're like, hey, ice cream requires that things be kept cold. Perhaps that's gonna come in the AD. So I'm gonna place this card out in AD and it's gonna go before the Mona Lisa because it has to. 
Now our next player agrees with this sentiment. They're like, ice cream looks good, Mona Lisa looks good, and the BC looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play as well. And I'm going to take Genghis Khan invades China. And I'm going to play this before ice cream, okay? So now we have three events on this side. Uh, and our next player says, wait a minute, this isn't right. Something's wrong here. Genghis Khan is correct and Mona Lisa is correct, but I don't think ice cream is where it should be. I think ice cream came along before that and they're going to call a challenge. Now, they're not actually challenging the player that played ice cream. They're challenging this side of the sphere. They're challenging the entire AD side of the sphere. And the challenge actually is going to affect the player who played their last. That would be the player who played Genghis Khan Invades China, which is our second player in this case. What's going to happen is all of these are going to get revealed. We're going to flip them all over and we're going to see if they're all correct. So we flip them over and we see that Mona Lisa was in 1503 AD. Everything else must come before that in this line. However, we take a look at ice cream and we see ice cream was invented in 400 BC. Not only does it come before this, but it actually should be on the other side of the sphere. It's completely on the wrong side and the sphere is wrong. Now, normally this would be bad for the player who played ice cream, but the player who played Genghis Khan Invades played after them, meaning that they didn't catch this player's bluff or incorrect play, and that player has gotten away with playing this card in the wrong spot. The last card, Genghis Khan Invades China, is played in the right spot. It's played at 1211 AD, but unfortunately for them, the ice cream was wrong and they didn't catch it, so they're going to take the penalty. To resolve a challenge, you're going to take a look at the loser of the challenge, and the loser of the challenge in this case is the player who played the Genghis Khan Invades China card because the order was incorrect after they played. That player is going to have to draw more cards to put into their tableau, and the number of cards they draw is going to be based on the number of cards that are on that side of the sphere. In this case, there are three. If there are one to four cards on the side of the sphere being resolved, you're going to draw two cards to add to your tableau if you're the loser of a challenge. If there are five cards, you're going to draw three to add to your tableau, and if there are six cards, you will draw four, which will set you back and, of course, have more cards in your tableau that you must get rid of. Regardless, this side of the board or the side of the board that was challenged will then clear, and the winner of the challenge, in this case the player who initiated the challenge, is going to have an option of a benefit that they can take. They can either play a card from their tableau to the board, giving them an extra play, and uh, it must be played on the side of the board that was just cleared, or they may give one card from their tableau to the player who lost the challenge, essentially adding another card to that player's area that they must play, and getting one away from their own tableau. Do note that this challenge could have very well gone the other way. If all of the events had been in the right order and a player issued a challenge, the player who was actually being challenged could have won and gotten the advantage of giving away a card or playing a card, while the ch challenger who issued the challenge could very well have had to draw cards to add to their tableau. The game of Chronosphere will end in one of three ways. The first is that a player manages to play all of the cards from their tableau out to the board and have their last card be played correctly. When you play your last card, you must play it face up and flip all of the other cards on that side of the sphere over, showing that they're all in the correct order. And if you manage to do so, you're going to win the game. Otherwise, you're going to have to draw four more cards and continue playing. There is a second way that the game can end, and that is when the sphere is entirely filled. So in this case, you'll see that the BC side of our sphere is entirely filled, nobody has challenged it, and that the AD side only has one slot left open, and that is the earliest of the AD events. And our player comes to his turn, and it's not his last card, but he decides that he's going to fill in this spot with the card Charlemagne is crowned. So he decides he's going to play this right here. When he does so, you're going to reveal all of the cards of the sphere. And if they're all correct, he wins automatically. Regardless of how many cards are left in his tableau area or his area in front of him, he's automatically going to win. So we would start flipping all of these over. That happened at 400 KBC. Beads were at 110 BC. 110 KBC. We're at 3600 BC with bronze. 2500 BC with iron. 700 BC with musical notation. 528 BC with Buddhism. So the whole BC side of the board is correct. So far, so good. We then go to the AD and flip them all over, and it's 771 AD, very early. Then 982 AD, correct. Then we're at 1773, still good. The vacuum cleaner happened at 1901 AD. Acrylic paint at 1964, and the mobile phone at 1947. Unfortunate for this player, they were one card off.
This is a very bad scenario for this player. It really means that they should have called a challenge on one of the two sides because the result of them being wrong is that the entire sphere will clear, but they must draw seven additional cards to place in their tableau and they're now at a huge disadvantage for ending the game. The third way that the game can end is that the entire deck of cards will be drawn out. And if that happens, the player that has the fewest cards in their play area at the end of the game will be the winner. And there you have it, that is Chronosphere from Kind Fortress Games, up on Kickstarter now and looking for your support. In this game, there are several things that are going to help you achieve victory. Knowledge of history is going to be an excellent help, of course, in trying to figure things out. But if you have excellent bluffing ability uh, and are able to place things in an area without your opponents noticing that you placed it in the wrong spot of that Chronosphere, either in the wrong side of the sphere or potentially just in the wrong position on that side of the sphere, you can get away with getting rid of your cards without an opponent ever knowing. Going. Challenging people at the right time is also very important. You want to challenge them before you play a card in that same side so that you don't get stuck with the error that maybe they made, uh, forcing you to pick up cards rather than them. So timing that out, making sure that there's not an error before you play a card in the area is very important. Uh, if you happen to end up in a scenario where you can finish the sphere and you're confident in all of the placements, you don't want to call off somebody else and try and have them you know, draw some cards and clear part of the sphere, you can try and finish that sphere and that will automatically win you the game. So there are all types of strategies you can take here, either having the sheer knowledge or being a good bluffer, or simply just hoping that you have a good idea of what the feel of the sphere is and how the areas are filled out. Maybe they're in order and you can just play it to your advantage. So if all that sounds good to you, check them out on Kickstarter. They're up right now and I'm sure they'd be happy to have your support. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.